So we're looking at another one where we're trying to relate some of our understandings here in the in this course. And so um, again, we remember that on a velocity versus time graph, if we are able to figure out the area under the graph, that represents our displacement. Um, we also know that we can get our displacement using a formula. So are these consistent? So let's give it a try. First of all, if we we're figuring out the area under this, I'd probably split this into a rectangle and a triangle. So down here, we can say um, the length times the width. And so our displacement here, or let's call it area for now, area one is equal to V naught times T. And we have to use V naught because we do recognize that the velocity is changing here. So we can't just say V. Now, next, let's figure out the area of the triangle. And so what we would have to do here is we'd have to say the area is one half base times height. And so the one half, the base is our T, just like it was before, T down here but the height is going to be VF minus V naught. In other words, VF up here and V naught down here. And the height of this triangle is the difference between those two. And so let's rearrange that a little bit. So if we were correct in what we're trying to figure out, the displacement, total displacement um, of this object um, is going to be a1 plus a2 and our a1 is v naught t and our a2 is one half t times vf minus v naught. All right. Now, one of the things that we're going to stop and think about is that vf minus v naught is the change in velocity. And whenever we think about change in velocity, we should be thinking about acceleration. Acceleration is our change in velocity over time, right? And so basically what we want to do is we can say, let's exchange. So let's rearrange this V naught minus V or VF minus V naught is equal to AT. Okay, and so let's just plug in that AT in in place of the VF minus V naught. And so V naught T plus one half, and now we have an A in there, and we have our original T, and we have a new T, T squared. And so we can go back to our formulas and look that up and say, yeah, okay, so figuring out the areas when there is acceleration, which there definitely is in this case, the uh, velocity went from V naught to VF, so we know that the acceleration was happening there, then we could, in fact, figure it out from the areas, and in a totally consistent sort of way, we could have gone to our formula from the formula sheet and figured it out that way, and clearly we would have ended up with the exact same thing. Consistency and patterns, always nice to see.